Hi, I'm Q from On Balance. In our last video, we talked about calcium nodules on swimming pool plaster. Specifically, I discussed nodules that are related to bond failure, where there's a, a separation between the layer of plaster and its substrate, which sometimes is gunite or shotcrete, or even sometimes a former layer of plaster. In this video, I'm going to talk about other kinds of calcium nodules. After the bond failure nodules, the next most common type of nodule is craze crack nodules. These are the types of nodules that form in small cracks on the surface of the pool plaster. So here again, like from the last video, we have a diagram of fresh plaster on gunite. But this time, we show that when new plaster is subjected to excessive drying, and that could be from very windy or hot or dry days, or from an excessively wet or rich mix, or from the overuse of set accelerators, or from being drained for excessive periods of time. Excessive shrinkage can form in the plaster surface. These cracks are referred to in terms such as shrinkage cracks, spider webbing, or crazing. Now, when these kind of cracks occur in fresh plaster, even before the pool is filled with water, those cracks begin to be backfilled with calcium hydroxide during the curing period. And this backfill process continues after the pool is filled with water. Just like on the rest of the exposed plaster, some calcium hydroxide releases from the craze cracks into the pool water after the pool is filled. Some of it dissolves into the pool water and it becomes part of the calcium hardness, but if conditions are just right, or wrong I guess, uh, such as enough calcium salt concentrations there or a just right width of the crack, or the ability of just the right amount of water to flow through the crack system. When these things come together, nodules can form at the plaster surface. And they form right along the cracks. The actual chemical process of craze nodule formation is the same as that of bond failure nodules. Water is given a path to penetrate into the plaster paste. It dissolves calcium hydroxide. And then the calcium hydroxide seeps out of the craze crack and it's converted to solid calcium carbonate when it reacts with carbon dioxide, which is a part of the alkalinity in the pool water. The difference is that now it's happening along the craze crack lines. Nodules on cracks tend to be much smaller than bond fill nodules, but their shape is still dictated by gravity. If they form on a horizontal surface, they're generally small round mounds. If they form on a vertical surface, they might drip down from the crazing like stalactites. Sometimes they appear simply as raised ridges outlining the craze pattern. Now, nodules can also form on transitions, such as plaster to tile or plaster to fittings. In this case, the path for the water penetration is the interface between the plaster and the grout, or the tile, or the fitting. It may have been closed originally, but opened later through stresses. So in this picture, we see a nodule on a tile to plaster transition. Look at the center of the main volcano. There's a hole that leads directly behind the tile and the plaster. Similar to a bond void, that's where the calcium hydroxide is coming from. Here's a diagram of how this type of nodule occurs. Water penetrates behind the surface, dissolves calcium hydroxide, and that calcium hardens or carbonates when it hits the pool water. It's even possible to get nodules on a fiberglass pool. In this diagram, we see a plaster pool that's been coated with fiberglass. In one such pool, there were pinholes in the fiberglass coating and water penetrated to the plaster behind the fiberglass. The calcium hydroxide rich water then came back out the holes and nodules were formed. Nodules can even form on surfaces out of the water altogether. In this case, water goes from the pool through the plaster cement and seeps out into the open air on the backside. Then carbonization occurs from CO2 in the atmosphere instead of from CO2 in the alkalinity of the pool water. The cement industry calls this form of calcium nodule efflorescence. So what about people who claim that aggressive water or flip-flopping the chemistry is what causes calcium nodules? Think about that. Pools that have been acid washed with or without water in the pool, or pools that have had acid startup procedures. These pools often have had enough muriatic acid added to them to expose the plaster to a pH of four and a half and an alkalinity level of zero for over a week. 
But in both cases, the plaster has a better appearance afterwards than before. But those surfaces don't get nodules any more than any other pool. Because the process of calcium hydroxide escaping and hardening at the surface isn't present. Water that's maintained sufficiently aggressive may make it hard for a nodule to form since the escaping calcium will dissolve into the water rather than form a solid nodule on the surface. But the aggressive water will also be aggressive to the rest of the plaster paste over the whole pool surface. That's etching over the whole pool, not nodules. Water, on the other hand, that's oversaturated, the, the opposite of aggressive, will cause scale, but again, evenly or uniform over the whole pool. And water that bounces back and forth between the two, etches and scales. It doesn't cause nodules. Regardless of the water chemistry, nodules are caused by an underlying plaster defect. Nodules are symptoms of a disease. They're not the defect themselves. So, what can be done about nodules? Well, the way to avoid nodules is to allow accepted ideal plastering practices to occur. Plaster the, the surface properly to ensure a good bond. Use the right amount of each component in the plaster mix. Mix it up and apply it correctly. And allow it to hydrate and cure normally. Critical failures that can lead to nodules include weak bonds between the plaster and the subsurface, which explains why nodules are more prevalent in replaster work. Over accelerated drying of the new plaster before filling, such as from high temperatures, sun exposure, low humidity, calcium chloride shrinkage, these result in excessive cracking of the plaster surface. Too wet or too rich of a plaster mixture can also result in greater shrinkage. Allowing the pool plaster in a drained pool to become too dry for extended periods of time, or too dry even for short periods of time if it's really hot or really dry outside. Can also get craze cracking from ground shifting or bond, sh bond failure from ground shifting. Too slow a filling of a new plaster pool can cause crazing, especially if it's combined with environmental factors that create shrinkage cracking like the heat or the, or the low humidity. Even so-called spike holes or artificially created cavities, um, things that, that interrupt the bond between the plaster and, and the gut, all of these things are things that can cause the situation that leads to nodules. Bonding plaster to new gunites is rarely a problem because there's a chemical bond where the curing plaster chemically locks in or keys into the curing gunite, in addition to a mechanical bond where the fresh plaster physically keys in, locks into the intentionally rough and porous surface of fresh gunite. It's new plaster to old plaster or new plaster to old gunite. Those kind of combinations are more difficult. That's because in these situations, no chemical bonding is likely due to the fact that the old plaster or old gunite is already thoroughly hydrated and chemically reacted and thus relatively inert. This fact has given birth to companies manufacturing, distributing, and instructing plasters on the use of additional bonding aids that, that can be put on the, the old surface to help kind of glue on and hold on to the new plaster. So how do we get rid of existing nodules? Well, if there's not too many of them, the best way to treat a nodule is to, to let it exhaust itself first, to let it grow as big as it's going to grow, and then remove it. So just as plaster dust formation lasts for about a week and a half, 10 days, and then all of the hydroxide's gone, as the nodule grows out of the, of the delaminated area, then eventually all of that hydroxide's going to be gone too. The nodule will stop growing. Once it stops, scrape it off, sand it off. Now you might have to do that two, three, four times before all of the hydroxide is completely exhausted. But once that happens, the nodule isn't going to grow anymore because there's no more source material for it to happen. Now, sometimes in order to fix a nodule and do it immediately, um, a plaster might come out and actually drain the pool, drill a hole right through the center of the nodule, at, and, and then after they scrape it smooth, they can inject epoxy into the hole. Then even if there's hydroxide available back behind, water can't get to it anymore because the epoxy is blocking it. And that works as well. You just have to be a little careful about draining a pool that already has known bond failure because removing the weight of the water off of that plaster can make the, the, the bond fill areas grow bigger because of, of, the, of the release of that pressure. When you're dealing with a craze nodule, 
it seems like the first thing that people want to do is drain that pool and either sand it or acid wash it to get rid of all of those nodules. That's a problem. Because when you acid wash or sand that surface, if it's full of small micro cracks to begin with, you're exposing more of those cracks once you fill up the, water, the pool with water again. Water will go into, into cracks that weren't even there exposed before and you'll get even more nodules all over the pool. So it's not a good idea to do that. If you can just remove the nodules themselves, you're fine. But it, it's a problem to acid wash your sand. It may be that there's just too many of the nodules to even deal with. What do you do then? Well, the first thing you have to remember is that nodules aren't really the disease going on here. They're the symptom of the disease. If there are nodules all over, it means that there's bond failure all over or there's craze cracking all over. And when you go to treat the, those things, you can make the problem worse through the treatment, either the draining or the sanding or the acid washing. And it gets to the point where if there are enough of them, you simply have to chip out the plaster and replace it. So whose fault is it? Well, nodules aren't always preventable, but good technique on the part of the plaster, sound bonding principles, those will eliminate the possibility for most nodules. The appearance of a few is not really unexpected, especially on replasters. You can deal with those. But we can see what the causes of each of the different types are, and, and whatever the cause is, whoever set that up to happen, then that's the responsibility for that. So thanks for watching this video. I appreciate your watching, and see you in the next one. Thanks.